Welcome to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Perda. I'm a life and marriage coach for moms, wife, mom of three, and I'm also an Aries, and for my fellow human design nerds, a sacral manifesting generator. This podcast is for women who want to be happier in their marriage as they navigate their journey through motherhood, even if you're like me and you weren't shown how while growing up. Inside, we're going to be talking about breaking generational cycles when it comes to how to handle conflict in healthy ways, redefining motherhood your way, and prioritizing your well being because here we believe that women don't have to sacrifice their happiness to be a great mom. And a quick note to mamas listening with kids around you may want to pop your earbuds in because nothing is left unsaid on this show, which means there may be times where something I say isn't meant for little ears. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage and Motherhood podcast. I am excited to be here and I hope that you are having a great day today. Um, This has been a very, very long week, not as bad as last week, but uh, this week my daughter's daycare uh, was shut down. So she unexpectedly stayed home with me all week, which has made it very, very difficult to work as I'm sure you can imagine. She is, she's two. So yeah, she, she's very needy right now at this age and it's just been a lot, but I'm excited because tomorrow we're heading out for a family road trip and I'm very excited to get some good time in together and leave all the stuff behind, right? Like the, the need to work and taking care of the house, but just spend time enjoying each other. Today, we're going to be talking about an emotion that comes up in marriage, but that we kind of question a lot, and that's anger. We all experience it because we're human. It is part of our wide range of emotions that we experience in life, but we often question whether it's warranted whether it's healthy, and we can make it mean a lot of things that can make it harder for us to deal with in the moment in our relationship, okay? Now, I don't know any woman that has never been upset or angry at their husband before, whether it's because he forgot your anniversary He loaded the dishwasher wrong. He's not carrying his weight around the house or he parents the wrong way. There is something that you have gotten angry at your husband about. Anger is something that we all experience in our marriage, right? I still get angry at my husband, but that doesn't mean that we get into fights right? So I'll go into more about that later. But if you put two people together, you make decisions that impact each other. And so you're bound to disagree and have issues with each other. You're going to disappoint each other. It is inevitable and it is unavoidable. It is inherent that you two have different thoughts and opinions because you two are not the same person. Even if you're really similar, you're going to disagree on some things, okay? And there's nothing wrong with feeling angry. Anger itself is not toxic, okay? It's actually pretty revealing. So anger is not toxic for you to experience. It is not toxic in your marriage. Anger is actually a very healthy emotion for you to experience, just like happiness is. And when you take a look at emotions, they're actually the same. They just feel different. They present itself differently in our bodies. When dealt with in a healthy way, anger can actually be pretty great in a marriage, okay? It can help your marriage be amazing. Anger means that there's honesty in the relationship right? You're honest with yourself. You're being honest with your spouse. You're advocating for your needs and you're giving him the opportunity to learn more about you 
and give him an opportunity to be there for you without anger, right? Well, either way, you're going to feel angry. So it's about whether you hold it in inside or you share it, right? So in this particular situation, we're going to be talking about how you are choosing to deal with your anger in an outward direction, okay? The problem is that most people don't know how to deal with anger in a healthy way. So while anger is not toxic itself, what can be toxic is how you deal with the anger. Anger is something that a lot of us women have been taught to push down and hide and, and kind of ignore because it's dark. It's unladylike. And we've been taught to keep other people comfortable. And expressing your frustration and anger is definitely not going to bring on feelings of comfort, right? It is not a cheery conversation to have when you feel angry and you're sharing that with someone. And because many women, myself included, have not been taught how to deal with anger in a healthy way, we end up doing some strange, funny things when we can't take it anymore. When we reach our breaking point, we just we just do some things that, that don't make sense. Like we lose our temper and we start to behave in ways that are very similar to having a tantrum. Okay? There's yelling, there's blaming, there's talks about unfairness and passive aggressiveness, maybe some door slamming, name calling, you name it. It's like we've done it all. I've personally done all of those things. And we think that by talking louder or talking down to our spouses, that they'll listen more because they'll know that we mean it this time, right? They're going to take us seriously. But if you take a look at it from their standpoint, being yelled at sucks. Being told what to do sucks. And being criticized, well, that sucks too. And yet we still do that knowing that we wouldn't appreciate being dealt with like that, right? And yet we do it thinking that we're going to get their attention. They're going to shape up, but if you're being honest with yourself, how often has that actually worked out for you? For me, it has never worked out. Like I may have gotten his attention, but what I shared wasn't well received. It didn't make him want to work with me very much because he felt the need to defend himself. So instead of Getting down to the issue and working together as a team, we were almost like playing a game of chicken. Both of us feeling proud, not wanting to collide, but too proud to stop so that neither one of us would be the first to back down, right? Is this you too? Knowing how to deal with your anger in a healthy way makes such a big difference. Instead of getting into yelling matches or having the home feel like ice cold and tense, you could feel like an actual team who has each other's backs and that you can take on anything that life throws at you. So I'm going to share a really big misconception about anger that has changed how I personally deal with anger in my marriage and what I have began teaching my clients so that they have been able to also help their marriages thrive through anger, right? Using anger as a vehicle to actually improve their marriage so that it gets better with time. Not allowing anger and the fights to be another reason of why marriage is hard, why it sucks, why you two aren't compatible, Whatever stories that your brain is trying to convince you of, 
when you are feeling angry and out of sync with your spouse, okay? So the big misconception about anger is that people make us angry. Now, how often have you said, my husband makes me so angry. My husband really pissed me off today. When you believe that he made you angry, that you start to actually believe that he's responsible for how you feel, that he literally controls how you feel, your experience of life, okay? When you do that, you start to view him as the actual problem, like your husband equals the problem. He becomes a villain of your fairy tale. So you start to give him some attitude or the cold shoulder because he screwed everything up. If only he would do this, life would be, life would be perfect, right? Your relationship would be amazing. If only he could just get it together. If only he could do blank, right? There's a whole lot of if onlys in that situation when you view your husband as the problem. And because you're upset and hurt, you start to reject his attempts to talk to you, to, you know, connect with you because you feel like he needs to pay for what he's done. Now, this is where couples go wrong. Instead of working through it, it becomes a whole situation, right? Like yellow tape and everything. Everybody stay out. <laughs> like This is a, a, a high danger area, right? In, in, in this situation, it starts to feel catastrophic and maybe even, even feels like it's impossible to resolve this issue that, that's happened. The focus is so much on how you two are on opposite ends of the issue that it's hard to work together, right? It's hard to even just come to the table to figure things out together as a team because both of you have dug your heels in and no one wants to budge because neither of you are willing to lose. So it becomes a competition, right? Because in a competition, there's a winner and there's a loser. And in this competition, it's to see who can convince the other to back down first, right? I don't have enough hands to count how many times in an argument with my husband where I was thinking of what to say and how to poke holes in what he had to say when I should have actually been listening to what he was sharing, right? This is in partnership. Marriage is not a competition. Marriage is a collaboration. So what if you stop seeing your husband as the problem? Like what would happen? The easiest thing to do is to blame him. Like I get it, right? Because I, I did plenty of that. It's, it's so easy to blame him because he did something that triggered your anger. Like I literally, like I, I'll just say it, like I was a queen of pointing fingers, especially in my romantic relationships. So I totally get how easy it is to do that. And having learned from what not to do, right? Eventually I learned that approach was not going to get me anywhere I wanted to be. It only resulted in too many hours wasted arguing, feeling stressed out, and going to work or parenting when things still feel raw and unresolved, right? Like, that sucks. You don't feel like yourself. You feel a little broken. It's just not a good situation, right? It doesn't make for good ingredients to have a good day. Our marriage impacts how our day feels like so when things are going really well you're feeling confident and awesome and 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 ready to take on the day and and such a present mother right you you feel confident to try things but 
when marriage feels hard, where you don't feel like a team and you're fighting all the time and, and the way that anger is dealt with is toxic and you're not able to resolve situations, you kind of have your head hanging low. Life feels hard. You don't feel confident. You just feel like really glum, right? I'm <laughs> just like imagining that, that like kid story. What is it? What's that book with the fish? Um, that's just like so grumpy. He's so, so grumpy. Um, I cannot think of the title. If you, if you know the title, let me know. I just can't like, I can't remember right now, but he just goes about the ocean. So, so grumpy. And marriage has that effect on you when things aren't going well, when you don't have the tools to handle your anger in a healthy way, when you don't have the tools to communicate in a healthy way, when you don't feel like you know how to work together as a team, it's really hard to go about your day. And luckily, this toxic way of dealing with anger that you might have grown up learning, witness your parents doing this, right? Like that's me, right? It's fixable. Okay. Thank goodness. It's not anger. That's toxic. It's the way you're handling it. That is toxic. And we can change how we handle stuff, right? The way you dealt with life as a teenager is not the same way that you deal with life now. So same thing. You've gotten wiser over the years. Life has hopefully gotten easier for you. Same thing with this. When you know how to handle your anger in a better way, your marriage is going to feel easier. It's going to feel lighter, right? And I want to help you stop experiencing anger in a way that makes your life worse, harder, right? And instead use it as a vehicle to grow your marriage, to make it feel like you can take on the world, that you two are solid, that you are a team, right? And if you're sick of feeling angry at your husband and you're ready to feel more relaxed in your marriage, to actually enjoy time together because you're not fighting so much. You don't feel like you're on opposite ends of life, right? You're like on completely different books, not even the same chapter, but rather like be on the same page so that you can have fun. You can feel connected. You can feel supported. You can feel like you're still dating, right? That's why you got married, I'm assuming, is that you can keep the good times coming. And becoming parents doesn't have to put a stop to that, right? What becoming parents has actually done is highlighted the things that need attention. It's highlighted the areas that need to be grown to experience your marriage in a better way. Okay. And if you're in this place where it's like, yeah, marriage is really, really hard right now. I don't know how to communicate better with my husband. We cannot get on the same page. I'm constantly angry at him and we haven't been in a good space in a while. Then we got to talk. We need to talk. Okay. Like, I would love to help you change all of that. I would love to help you work through those tough feelings of anger, know how to use it to the benefit of your marriage so that you can advocate for your needs without feeling like you need to blow things up to be heard, to be taken seriously and deal with your anger in a productive way that encourages open communication and collaboration, okay? Your husband is in the marriage to be in it with you. He's not in it to compete with you. It is not a game, right? And if anything, if your marriage has to be a competition, be on the same side, right? 
compete against life's challenges instead of against each other. You two have chosen each other for a reason, right? You are each other's person. You're each other's lobster, like whatever phrase you want to say. Remember why you got married and, and sink into that, anchor into that, dig your heels into that. Be stubborn about that. And let that motivate you, encourage you, inspire you to work together, to collaborate, to figure out how can we do this together? We are in it together. Even if it feels hard right now, we still have each other's backs. Okay? So if that feels really hard for you and you want to change that and you're so ready to get back to that space of enjoying your husband again, to have your marriage completely do a 180, just like my clients have been able to do, then reach out to me. This is exactly what I do with my clients in coaching, okay? And let's talk about it. Let's figure out what's going on, and I'll teach you the skills that you need to know to be able to do that, okay? It's really not hard once you know how to handle it, once you know what to do and how to view things. That's it for this episode. I hope that you are able to take a lot away from this episode and integrate it and practice it in your marriage so that you can turn your marriage around. And remember, anger itself is not toxic. It's the way you handle anger that can be toxic. Change that and you change your entire experience of your marriage. All right. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week. And I'll catch you back here next week. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Marriage and Motherhood Podcast. I hope that this episode helped you deepen your relationship with your husband and more importantly, with yourself. If you know someone that this episode would help, please share it. All right. See you back here next week. Bye.